This is courtesy of the amazing, amazing over and under Twitter account, which I always go on to get all my streetwear adjacent information and news. And they had this really amazing feature and throwback that made me kind of think fondly of the great and the powerful and the goated Virgil Abloh, RIP to the dead. And this is an amazing kind of throwback because it's highlighting the famous Pyrex 23 flannel shirt from yesteryears that Virgil was anonymous, so it was flipping famous for um, and kind of essentially was a blessing and a curse in terms of how he was perceived as a designer because I think ever since this day, people kind of always looked at him with a bit of a corner of their eye like, oh, you're not really a designer. All you're doing is just slapping logos and pre-made shit, blah, 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 blah. But I also remember the time for me, this is the one time where I also wasn't necessarily the biggest fan of Virgil as a person. I remember this really triggered me at the time when this came out. And the reason why it triggered me was because I remember in this era of Virgil designing under the moniker uh, Pyrex Vision before he had to change it because the Tupperware brand Pyrex told him to change it, told him to send him a cease and desist, which then led into um, Off-White, which I think the name Off-White came from ASAP 12 um, of ASAP Mob actually gave Virgil the name for the brand. And... Um, you know, from the kind of, you know, from the off, from the offshoot of Pyrex, basically, um, cooking that off-white in those Pyrex flipping Tupperwares. And the funny thing is, at that time, Virgil and everybody in that crew, they used to use this phrase, doing it for the kids. Heron Preston, Matthew Williams, um, ja Justin Saunders from Jound, all those guys always use that phrase, doing it for the kids, doing it for the kids. And I always found it very patronizing, personally, and a bit of an insult to my intelligence, because everything they were doing was everything but for the kids they were jumping on private jets driving around g-wagons and shit um you know buying fucking clothes that were like t-shirts that were 500 pound plus like selling fucking 700 pound flannels that were just printed on the side you know with this logo on it i just thought it was really patronizing to say that because how are you doing it for the kids or most kids can't afford the shit that you're making you're making your and in this case virgil what he did is that he went out and he bought these rugby flannel shirts that were soon to be discontinued he bought up the entire stock i think in north america he found the one place where all these shirts were bought out the entire stock so they essentially were not available and completely sold out and dead stock they're basically, basically gone and then he essentially just placed the pyrex logo on the outside so on the back of the shirt with pyrex written on the top and 23 on the bottom the number of michael jordan and he didn't even change the buttons on the shirt so, you know, if it was me, I would have changed the buttons to pearly buttons or something, made them a bit more substantial, maybe would have added some pockets or something. There was nothing changed to the structure of the shirt, structurally, just the screen printing of the Pyrex on the top, on the back, sorry. And it made me think, like, how can you, with good conscience, buy these shirts for $30 and then charge $700? That's a fucking crazy markup, especially under the tutelage of, like, you know, you're doing it for the kids. But then over time... It became such a good way to market and to kind of push his design ethos of like that three percent, that three percent designing um, ethos thing that he had going on, and it also became like a really good thing to kind of sit back and kind of watch as his sort of design practice evolved over time especially once he started getting more resources and more access to information and whatnot because then what you saw was that this was a beginning point this wasn't what he was always going to do until the end of time it was what he could do at the beginning because he didn't have much resources he didn't wasn't he didn't have the ability to make his own shirts back then so he went out there and got the best level the best version of a rugby shirt and then applied his branding on top of it like any other good streetwear brand would do so that made complete sense of it but one thing i also loved about it is that virgil kind of leaned into the meme he leaned into the troll of it and kind of made it part of his kind of artistic expression he's part of his work part of his practice part of the way that he kind of spoke about clothes and i feel like he gave it a nice kind of um, um veneer of protection because it was somewhat intellectual that's a very smart way to play it so instead of kind of trying to justify having the 700 dollar price tag on it you just frame it in a very intellectually honest curious artistic kind of way so that people can are forced to con confront it or kind of talk about it like an art piece as opposed to you just trying to make the most money you can out of these flannels you bought because most likely 
he probably didn't even spend seven hundred dollars on all the flannels, but he could sell one for seven hundred dollars. He's made a crazy amount of money. So clearly, that was an absolutely correct way to kind of do things. And the funny thing I love about it is, if you see, courtesy of over under here, they've got pictures of the shirt and pictures of some quotes here that were taken from, I'm not mistaken, a complex article that was kind of ragging on Virgil, and he took the quote and basically put it on a carpet that he did with IKEA. So imagine that flex. So the beginning of your design career, the beginning of your fashion career, you start off making this flannel shirt where you print Pyrex and 23 on the back of it. You do a 700% markup on it, which is fucking crazy. You sell them for crazy amounts of money and you make loads of money in the, in the process. You do it under the tutelage or under the premise that is for the kids. Everyone laughs at you, says your shit. You can't design. You don't know what you're doing. Later on down the line, you become one of the most important designers of your generation. Your name is ringing in the streets. You're doing all the collaborations under the sun. You then become one of the first people in streetwear, really, to do a singular collection with fucking Ikea. And one of the flexes that you do is that you design a rug, a flipping piece, a carpet, right? That you can put in your house or you can frame on your wall. Again, the kind of flip on the artistic piece with this quote. It's highly possible Pyrex simply bought a bunch of rugby flannels, slapped Pyrex 23 on the back, and resold them for an astonishing markup of about 700%. That is legitimately one of the greatest pieces of artwork I've seen. Living. Especially when you go even deeper into it, and you see that he's wearing his own off-white Air Force Ones. And endless, you know, custom pair of endless denim deems that he may have done a collaboration with fucking, um, what's his name, with Young Lord. That is the biggest flex ever. To be standing on top of an Ikea, on Ikea carpet with the quote that was meant to kind of bash you from complex on it and a pair of your own shoes. Pièce de résistance. And then you move on again. You've got a picture of the shirts, which, you know, the, the, the flannel shirts themselves were pretty sick, don't get me wrong. But I just think the idea of paying £600 for a flannel shirt that says Pirates on 23 on the back of it, it killed me. I could never do that shit. And if anything, the only really thing I, the only real thing I liked about Pyrex at the time was the activation. Having like ASAP Mob sort of like active, you know, basically part of the lookbook when it first launched, um, the shorts, the hoodies, I thought were really cool. But the flannel and stuff, I was never really a big fan of, even though it did do um, flipping numbers in the streets and whatnot. So big up Virgil for that one and big up Over and Under of kind of featuring it. We've got a couple more pictures here with some people wearing it. You got a picture here, I think. I don't know who this is in the Oh, Jay Z in the studio wearing up the shirt. You got ASAP Rocky wearing a shirt at a show. You got Kim Kardashian back in the day wearing a shirt. You got a picture of Kanye and Kim with Kim got the other shirt on again. So the shirt did numbers. It was really out there and doing crazy bits out there. And he also got a screenshot showing um the price of them, right? So $35, you could buy it originally retail. And then it was selling on RSVP, which is uh, funny enough, a store that Virgil was involved in. I think. Before he passed away, I'm pretty sure he stole his share in the store. It was a streetwear store based in, in Chicago, RSVP Gallery. And the shirt was listed as 600 I think, is it? $680 at the flipping, at the flipping online store, which is absolutely heinous. And there's a picture here of um, ASAP Mob, the famous fucking video um, where he launched Pyrex for the first time. This, this video was fucking crazy when it, went, when it went viral, man, when I was kind of coming up in the scene. Um, and the graffiti on the wall and shit. This is absolutely the bit. So big up Virgil for it. And then let's read the flipping caption. Um, courtesy of Over and Under. It says, The story of Virgil Abloh's Pyrex flannel shirt um, that redefined the standards of luxury. In 2013, Virgil Abloh, who was Kanye West's creative director at the time, sold out of the above flannel shirt at an insane ticket of 550 a pop, an exorbitantly high price for this product that sold out in literal minutes. The real, converse, the real controversy, however is not the insane price, but the fact that the shirts were almost likely purchased at a retail from the Ralph Lauren Rugby. So from Ralph Lauren Rugby, who was going out of business at the time and had lots of models for sale. He then slapped the flannel with some decals and marked the piece up in hundreds of dollars. The original retailed for $79.95 and is currently on sale for £35.99. $35, $500, sorry, 99 Regardless of what you think of the actual acts of the decision, I think this is almost con commentary on our culture. It literally doesn't matter what the actual product is. If the correct hype and names are associated with it, anything can go. The rug in the first photo, um, in the first and last photo is from 2019 MCA Chicago. Virgil printed the fashion critics quote about his piece on the black rug that was made to be walked over and trampled on when he entered the show. 
the original quote. Da, 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 da. So it, it was a big flex. I loved what he did with it. Um, the funny thing about it, though, how I'm flipping criticizing it, is that much m many years later down the line, even though I thought Virgil was, you know, um, not the greatest for doing that shirt and then kind of promoting the whole I'm doing it for the kids thing and trying to sell that shirt out a fucking in crazy, crazy, crazy markup. Low, many, many years down the line, guess what I did? I went out myself and I decided to buy a shirt, a flannel shirt of the same type of design um, that was grossly over, you know, that was grossly overpriced as well in the same way that Virgil's thing was. And I was perfectly fine with it. I actually defended it. And I'm actually still pissed to this day that I ended up kind of misplacing it somewhere. I'm pretty sure it's somewhere in my house, but I can't flip and find it for love nor money. But I essentially went out there and purchased this flannel, this Balenciaga. Uh, oh, what's it? This Balenciaga. It's, I think it's called padded flannel. I had this for a while. And if I'm not mistaken, the retail on this flannel when I bought it might have been like 900 and if you know what I'm talking about, it's a Balenciaga flannel that came out, I think, in 2017. I think so. And um, designed by Demner, of course. And it's oversized, but it kind of fits like a jacket. But it looks like a, you know, it looks like a shirt. I think it's got it here. Um, Kanye wore it. Travis Scott wore it before also. It's this, like, oversized um, thing here. So many years later, after the fact, I purchased one of these Balenciaga oversized flannel shirts. And I was perfectly fine with it. So I kind of love the hypocrisy of me at the time complaining about Virgil slapping a 23 on the back of those shirts when I then went out and justifiably, I've got actually this this flannel also. I've got this padded check shirt as well thing. I went out and justified buying these overpriced flannel pieces that I probably had no business purchasing because they were grossly, grossly, grossly overpriced. So maybe Virgil was onto something because maybe this is where Demner got inspiration to do his thing to kind of grab this but without the logo on the back of it. And this is definitely one of my favorite pieces that Demna's designed when it comes to that Demna um, aesthetic being applied to Balenciaga. So RIP to Virgil the Great, um, designed to live on far, you know, far past his flipping mortal being actually being here. And we're still flipping, debating and arguing about all these things again and again and again. So that definitely goes to show that he left a crazy, crazy mark on the culture, man. So big up um, Virgil Abloh, gone but never begotten. Big up Virgil.